Well, we are starting a new sermon series today on the books of, of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and we're going to do things a little bit differently. Andy McMullen is going to be starting off 1st John today. I'll be picking up next week with 2nd John. So most of you know Andy. He's been around here for, for a little while. He served as our youth director in years past, our connections. Now he is our uh, ministries director, so he kind of keeps things running. If you saw the uh, Serve Fair uh, campaign that we had going on, help Andy. We, he, he needs lots of help, so... <laughs> yes, yes I do. <laughs> but I just wanted to pray over him this morning, and then uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to him. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for Andy. I thank you so much for the word that you've put in his heart today. I pray that you would open our hearts to receive it. And Lord, I pray that your spirit would help to uh, just illuminate the text today and form Christ in us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. What is love? So for the uh, next couple of weeks we'll be in John, and so I would encourage you, maybe you are looking for something to do in your devotion time, maybe what you would do, I've done this in the past when there's a sermon series, is uh, you would take a chapter or a half of chapter each day and just really soak it in, read through it. Over the next uh, three weeks, we'll be uh, getting into these um, letters, these love letters as we've entitled them, um, and so... Uh, John here is, is tucked away uh, at the end of the New Testament. If you, if you flip a, a few pages, you can miss it altogether. Um, but it's tucked away there at the end. And so, um, of course, John is one of those, those names, as we're in the scriptures, that are, are very well known. Wrote, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John wrote the gospel, um, was one of Jesus' disciples, obviously, wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, and then Revelations as well. And so... Um, I think the Lord is really going to teach us a whole lot throughout this series. I know as I've been pouring over these scriptures and uh, just really meditating on this throughout the week, I've been excited and I'm super excited to share with you today. And so, um, John, let's think about John uh, a little bit here. This is uh, a man that spent every day with Jesus. Can you imagine that being with the Master, the Savior, of the world every day for several years in a row, learning from him, hear, hearing the, the authority in his voice and, and seeing the miracles. And, and then, of course, as we know, John was there when Jesus was being crucified. Remember what Jesus said to John. He said, behold your mother. So uh, the way I envision this is that you know, Mary, Jesus' mother, is there at the cross. Jesus is, is dying. John is there and a few others. And Jesus says to John, behold your mother, looking at his mother, Mary, saying to John, John, you're to look after my mother. You know, what, what, a, what a big task. Um, and then John, uh, obviously, uh, Jesus did not stay in the ground. He was resurrected. And we see John as one of the uh, faster disciples. Now, is either that John was fast or Peter was slow. We don't know about that. But as you read the account there in John, we see that um, he was apparently fast. I don't know. And then it, as history um, uh, shows, not in, in the, the Bible, but other sources indicate that John was likely not martyred for the faith. So the other disciples um, were, were martyred, but John apparently was not, according to other historical sources. So this series of, of John is, is a lot to unpack. I've got, for good or bad, I don't know, but I've got 1 John, which is a lot, and I'm certainly not going to cover all of 1. In fact, after the service last night, uh, a gentleman was telling me, I just got studying, I just got done studying 1 John for eight weeks. I'm like, well, I'm going to talk about it and whatever. 30 minutes or so. <laughs> and uh, so there's a whole lot more to dive into. But what is love? And so we have a theme verse that we're going to be mentioning every week. And this theme verse is 1 John 4, 8. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. So let's read that together. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And let's pray here. Lord, our prayer here is as we get into this, this word, your word, Lord, as, as we um, go to you, we're asking you to transform our hearts, Lord, that we would be dialed into you even just a, a little bit more 
after we spend time here together uh, with one another, Lord, that you would be our teacher, Holy Spirit. It would be you shaping and molding us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we'll be going uh, throughout that scripture uh, several times over the next couple weeks. And so I have two points this morning, just two. (laughs) What is love? So love. I love coffee. I love basketball. Yeah, I love singing. I do. I love singing. I love my kids. I love tacos. Uh, I love my wife. Yeah. I love... So this word, you know, we use this word uh, perhaps sometimes when unimportant, we like overuse the word love, you know, like I love tacos, or when it's really important, we underuse it. Like I underuse saying how much I love my loved ones. I don't know if you can relate with that. So I mentioned my wife. So a little kind of sidebar here, since we are talking about love. Last week was my wife's birthday. And on the calendar, um, I had known that, ooh, like in a few months in advance, I noticed, oh, her birthday falls on a Sunday. So that means Potentially, I could embarrass her on a Sunday because her birthday falls in. But we actually, I, I had a, a slightly different plan um, that didn't come up until about 10 days ago or, or two weeks ago, something like that. Emily and I were talking at, at some point a month ago, and it just came up in conversation. She's like, I've never been north of New York. And I was like, oh. Hmm. So the wheels got turning, and then I was like, oh, I could take her away for a few nights. Our kids are a little bit older now, so... Um, so we went, and it was a surprise for her, and she didn't want to know. So we're driving along, and we get past New York. We keep driving, and I'm like, do you want to know yet? She's like, nope. I'm like, okay, we just keep driving. And then after some time, she's like, okay, because we were going to Boston, and it's like Boston is like three hours past New York, and we're in, in about an hour or two away. She's like, okay, let me know. Where are we? <laughs> so we had a, an awesome time, and... Um, I would definitely not be here today if it were not for my wife. Um, I could actually, you know, I could change the message and talk about it. <laughs> but but uh, when I was, uh, a little side note, when I was young, I was, I was very new to the Lord, and she was strong in the Lord. And the Lord used her to help me stay on the straight and narrow. And I, I will never forget that. Praise God. So we have, this morning, we have two points. The two points we're going to cover, first one, knowing and enjoying God are crucial to understanding what love is. So knowing and enjoying God are crucial to grasping the meaning of love. And then the second point is is a comparison here. We We have counterfeit love versus purposeful love. So those are the two points we'll be covering And let's get into this first one. And we're going to go to um, 1 John 2, 20 to 22. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? So John, I don't know how much you've read John for a second, but there's some bold statements. I mean, just read that there. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? That word liar is a pretty bold statement. If you've ever been called a liar, it's like, ooh, ouch, that hurts, you know. So here, this first point, I'm going to talk about the word knowing. So knowledge of what? What is John talking about here? Well, he, he says it pretty plain to us. Knowing that Jesus is who he said he was and he came to do what he said he was going to do, that he's the Messiah. So this very first basic foundational point is that knowing the gospel, that gospel truth, is the absolute foundation of understanding what love is. If there's another kind of overarching theme, so that the title of this is What is Love? But the other part I'm going to really hone on in as well is the application of the gospel in every fabric of your life. 
And I'm going to get back to that in a second. But so knowledge of the gospel. So this gospel message, God is love. This gospel message, I think for me, uh, what's very helpful are visuals. I remember about a decade ago or so, um, we took the youth group a few different times down to a ministry in Ocean City called Sunspot. And what we did for some of the times is we would go onto the boardwalk at Ocean City and share the gospel with people. It's pretty, pretty radical um, for adults, for teens, I don't care what age you are, but, but developing a conversation and then sharing the gospel. And what was really helpful is we had these gospel emoji bracelets. And it was just a, a great way to help us remember. Now, I kind of modified the gospel emoji bracelet. I'll tell you here in a moment. But the heart is God loves us, right? He loves us. He created us. We go back to Genesis. God loves us. He created us to be his image bearers, right? But we have the division sign. We know that we all have fallen short of God's glory. We've all sinned. We've all gone our own way to one degree or another. And even if it's a minor little degree, it's still a degree, and we have fallen short. And so we have the cross. So the cross, Jesus, this was a plan that God had all along. He, God knew what he was doing to redeem us. He came to be that, that sacrificial lamb, that, that sinless, spotless lamb. He did not sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. He came for us. He went to that cross for me, for you, for the world. And then I could not find an emoji for the empty tomb. So (laughs) there is my zero or O or I don't know. But so whoever knows the emoji people, you've got to come up with an, an empty tomb emoji so that it would fit this. But he did not stay in the grave. You know, he conquered the grave. And so this gospel message, this knowing this is absolutely foundational and crucial to understanding what love is. Because it, it, we go back to this, God is love, and we're like, okay, well then, that kind of defines love, and, and so, you know, that's pretty simple. But it's also kind of complex, isn't it? I mean, thinking about God, God is like, oh yeah, God, you know, created everything, and God, yeah. But then, that's also some deep waters there too as well. And so, knowing this gospel truth is crucial. Now back to my point about the application of the gospel into every fabric of our life. Think about this. If, if you could hold on to this, and this is something the Lord has been really shouting to me this week, applying this to every aspect of my life, knowing it forwards, knowing it backwards, looking at it from different angles, perhaps that means maybe different cultures or different perspectives, not that it ever changes, but looking at it from someone that grew up as a Muslim or someone that never grew up with faith at all or someone that thought they grew up in the church, but it was a counterfeit faith. And it was knowing it from all these different perspectives and angles and then applying it to every aspect of our life. Yes, applying the gospel to your marriage, applying it to the decision about what to do with your money, applying it to the very tiny decisions in life, to the very big decisions in life. And you're saying, well, Andy, that's a little, I mean, everything? Well, what's the temptation if we only do some of the things? Then it's, here's me and God and what we have over here, and then here's me and Andy, and Andy can figure out these things. They're on the list of like the short list of what I can... But then over here, these are like the more spiritual things. And so what we start to do is compartmentalize. And then, because we are prone to wander, our flesh is prone to say, I, I, I've got this figured out. We can add more to this. And then it's just like, oh, God, and the big things in life with God, you know, that's it. So I just encourage you and challenge you to apply that gospel message, to know that gospel message in every aspect of your life. So think about knowing, you know, as we go to this, this first point of knowing and enjoying. So knowing is kind of like the truth, right? Knowing that gospel message. And then enjoying 
is a word that's kind of interesting to us. Enjoying, knowing and enjoying God. Enjoying God. Okay, so we are going to read um, a good amount of scripture here. And it's just that good. So we have to read it all. So you might say, well, why didn't you just pick out a little bit of it? Well, it's just that good. So if you have your Bibles or if you want to follow on the screen up here, we are going to be in 1 John 4, 8, and we are going to go all the way to 21. So 4, 8 to 21. Do you love the Bible app? Yes, I do, but I don't want to comment on that right now. I just want to read it. I know, right? All right. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Say that word 10 times, propitiation, it's really hard. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God if we love one another. God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has not seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Now, I don't know about you, but as I poured through that several times and I've read it in the past a lot, what was just screaming out to me in those scriptures was the word relationship. Think about these terms used often. The word abide was used many times. The word love, of course, was used at least 10 times. The word others was used many times, at least five. And so as I'm going through these scriptures, I'm, I'm really drawn to that word relationship. You know, think about the author of this book of John, John himself. You know, he was was with Jesus. He was was there uh, also the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. He was there um, getting to know the Father through the Son and through the Holy Spirit. And so we have that privilege as well. And it just totally bleeds relationship. So I think sometimes we can tend to err on one side or the other. We can tend to err on being more in the knowing, knowing, knowing and the truth. Or we can tend to be just like, I'm just going to be with God and enjoy God and that's it. And not know what he's saying. And not wrap my mind around the gospel. And I think what the Lord was showing me this week was, Spend time with me. If, you, if, if we build this relationship, Andy, if we come together with one another, oh, I'm going to fill you up. If we enjoy that relationship with the Father, then I think we can avoid some of these pitfalls. And some of these pitfalls, pitfalls being there's, there's think about religiosity in our 
Western world or even around the world, the, the rigidity of that that says, I can figure it out. Um, I, can, I, can, I can do it. I can pull myself up, up, up by my bootstraps and figure this thing out. Andy, you got it. And we can almost use religion to justify that. We can turn it into a list of do's and don'ts. And what that does is it says, I am loved based on my performance. Church, that's a lie. It's a lie. And you know what? These lies don't just come out of the blue. They kind of happen slowly and they kind of creep in. So a great image to have is that image of that that just lump of clay, that just humble lump of clay. And that's you, and that's me, and that's just saying, Lord, shape me, mold me, how you determine. It's not about what I'm doing and what I'm following and all these lists. Yes, they're important to for us to put our faith into action. I'm not saying that. But if that becomes where we bend all the lists, then we're not going to enjoy the Father. And so regarding these um, knowing and enjoying, this first point regarding this, I just, just jot down this question, and you don't have to answer it now, but just jot down these two questions and ponder them over the next week or so. The first question is this. Do I preach the gospel to myself? That's the first question. Do I preach the gospel to myself? Number two. Do you enjoy just spending one-on-one time with the Lord, just with him. All right, going on to point number two, purposeful love versus counterfeit love. We're going to go to 1 John 2.15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So let's talk a little bit about counterfeit for a moment. Now the problem with counterfeit is not that it's totally obvious. Think about that cashier. You bring in some cash to pay and maybe you have a 50 or a 100 and what do they do? They mark it up, they hold it up and they're like, okay, is this real? The problem is that 100, let's say it were a counterfeit, the problem is that 100 is actually fake, but it looks real. So the problem with counterfeit is not that it's so obvious. Now think about some of these, these words I'm going to share with you or, or um, scenarios as well. This day and age, 2024, when we think about counterfeit, here, think, think about some of these words or, or, or uh, scenarios. Um, AI. People scamming for money online. Portraying an image of holiness, but not acting that way at home. It's kind of like, ah! and then you pick up them, hey, how you doing? Right? Believing a news source immediately after reading it. Politics. I won't go. Okay. So, <laughs> so, as we're thinking about this word counterfeit, there's a lot of things in this day and age that we could, we could look at and be like, wow, we are just inundated so often. And I don't think as Christians, we just suddenly one day say, oh, I'm going to start loving the ways of the world. Remember what this verse says, is that it says, do not love the world or the things in the world. So as John, you know, we kind of get perplexed a little bit when we, when we think about that statement, don't love the world or the things in the world. And, 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 and what God 
is not saying to us, he's not saying don't love <laughs> each other and, and people and, and, and be thankful for the air that we have and all. He's not saying that. He's, he's, this term world is to be connected with the sinful, with the ungodly, with the enemy himself. So when you, when you see that word mentioned in this context throughout, and it's not just here in the scripture, it's in other places as well, that's what is being referred to. And so we don't suddenly wake up one day and just say, I love everything in the world. It's little by little over time that we can believe some lies. Or, you know what the, the enemy likes to do? He likes to give just a little, just kind of sneak a little lie in there, kind of around a bigger truth. Let me give you an example from my life. This is something that the Lord has kind of been showing me over almost like a, a two-decade, um, <laughs> like just revealing something to me. So I kind of have to go back a little bit. When I was a teenager in high school, I wanted to do this. Uh, I, our school is connected to like a Votech program. I wanted to do, they had the program. It was like first responders, EMT, firefighter, I forget the name of it, but I, I was really excited. I wanted to do it. I signed up. I got into the program. I was really learning a lot. I guess I was about a junior or so in high school, really getting into it. And throughout that course, it was about a two-year course, but after the first year, there were some things that happened. I got offended. There were some relational challenges. I Honestly, I kind of don't remember all of it. There was some justification there, but I was younger. But I just said, you know what, I quit. I don't want to do this as much as I love this topic. I'm just, I'm done with these people here. So I quit that program. Well, uh, fast forward maybe, I don't know, five years. I would say in, in my 20s and in my 30s, I know, you were probably thinking I'm you know, still in my 20s or 30s, but I'm not. So in my... <laughs> In my 20s and in my 30s, uh, and one day I'll, I'll have to write it down, but I've had such an unusually high amount of instances where I'm the first person on a scene for an accident, a crime, or the crime is actually happening and I didn't necessarily realize it. Just very intense, painful what, not like little fender benders, but like, whoa, I'm giving CPR here, like bloody, like these intense moments that, and they, they have kept happening over these couple decades. And it, 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 one thing it makes me think about is our first response, our police officers, our firefighters, our, those that are working like in ERs that have to deal with that like every day. I just can only imagine. Um, but after like a couple of them, I'm like, Lord, let's, you know, could, could I somehow avoid these? <laughs> like, why does this keep happening? Um, you know, and I, I used to kind of think about it, I'm just in the wrong place at the wrong time. But the Lord has, has transformed my thinking. No, Andy, you're in the right place at the right time. And I think the big overall thing that he's been showing me in all of that is you just don't know about this life. Well, actually, you know that you will have challenge and struggle and pain. And in this world, like Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trouble. And I think one of the biggest pitfalls as we think about God's love is we think about it's going to go the way that we want it to go. And in and, 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 and church, I'm not saying that there's not gratitude, and there's not, um, oh, Lincoln, it's okay. I, is something I said? I don't know. But, um, it's not that, that we shouldn't be um, gracious and, and thankful and that we have so much to be blessed, but, but he, the Lord told us you're going to have trouble. There's going to be struggle, and church, we have a limited time here, and we have limited time to share this good news but can I just say, thank you, Lord, that this is not all for us. <laughs> thank you, Lord, that after this life, every tear is going to be wiped away. Amen. We're not going to have those, you know, sometimes we're battling so much just in our own minds. And you know what? He's got a place that he's preparing for us. Amen.
Amen. And so, as we think about those times in our life where the Lord has taught us something, let's think about this purposeful love. So we have that counterfeit love that is kind of creeping in, and we got to really be mindful of it. We've got to probably do a whole lot of less screen time and a whole lot, well, unless your Bible's on your screen, then you can keep that, but a whole lot more Bible time and Jesus time because those messages come in. So let's talk about this purposeful love. And I know all of us here have wrestled with that question, God, what's my purpose? You know, this doesn't seem, but God, what's my, you know, just wrestling with that statement. And, you know, what I've seen unfold in my life is sometimes it takes a little time to be able to see in the rear view. And I'm just, I'm just going to give you two examples in my life. I used to have way more um, anger issues, just would get angry a whole lot quicker. <laughs> it just, you know, it's funny how like everyone's like, it's the Irish temper, it's the Italian temper, it's the Guatemalan temper, like everyone's got a temper, like I don't care what country you're from. <laughs> so sometimes we blame things on DNA, but no, it's just, it's just the flesh. And so I used to struggle with anger, but what I've noticed over, over the years and, and, and certainly, we have to allow the planting. We have to allow the watering. We can't just be like, give me peace, no more anger. I'll just, no, like we have to step it. We have to let the watering happen. We got we to gotta take that faith step. But he produces the growth, as Paul says. He produces the growth in us. And so I've seen a whole lot more peace. If I were to do a little measurement and, and look at some videos from 15 years ago, 10 years ago, 20, oh, it, I wouldn't want to see them. But I, what, I, what that would help me do is to see that the Lord has given me so much more peace. And he's, he's grown that in me. That's not Andy coming up with some plan and figuring it out. No, he's grown that in me. Another one is patience. So this is, you know, the fruit of the Spirit, right? That, that love of God, that purposeful love of God, he's going he's gonna to grow that fruit in you. The love, joy, peace, patience, all that, right? So patience, I've become a whole lot more patient than I was even a few years ago. And the Lord, again, has done that work. And I know, uh, so I'm speaking specifically right now to someone who is newer in the faith, or maybe you're not necessarily newer in the faith. You had faith years ago, and then you're coming back. I want to speak specifically to you right now. Or perhaps you are younger, and you're just kind of wrapping your head around this crazy world, <laughs> and you're trying to make sense of things. I just want to give you encouragement to say, you know what? It, it, it's tough. There's, it always seems like something else comes up. A relational challenge, a financial, this happens, medical. Something else comes up, and we get discouraged. And can I just say to you that that the Lord has a purpose in all of it. And it's, he, he's the one that sent his son to the cross for you. Like he, ha, he knew that was part of the plan. And so if we can trust, my favorite verses, Proverbs uh, 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord, love that verse. If we can trust that he knows what he's doing, that we might not always feel it, right? We might not always Feel the love, right? But we know that he loves us. He's got a plan. And so if you are newer in the faith or just coming back around or maybe you've hit a really difficult bump in the road, trust him. Get yourself around others who trust him. He's got a plan. He's got a purpose. Sometimes we can't even see, but maybe only a foot in front of us. But he's got you. Amen. Amen. Father God, we just thank you that you've got us, Lord. That, Lord, your love is so clear when we look at the gospel. And, Lord, we just see that you are just the one that embodies every aspect of love. And, Lord, you are the one that shows us truth from error. And God, you have a plan for our lives. We just thank you, Lord, that you've reminded of 
reminded that to us this morning. We just thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name. So, hey, as is our custom, after the message, we enter into a time of reflection. So as we are preparing our hearts for communion, and a little bit we'll, we'll partake in communion, but as we are preparing, let's reflect. These, this is the time to say, Lord, am I preaching the gospel to myself? Do I spend time with you? This would be the time to say, Lord, is there, is there something in me that I'm not even seeing? This is the time to confess to him. So let's take time now to reflect.